We have survived COVID, we survived stupid weather, and we are here today. Yeah, it, it, it's fun. It, I'm happy to be part of 
those incredible stories that brought us to where we are now. I mean, I, I, I have a school in Los Angeles that teaches performance uh, capture and, and action acting, which is what I do. And it's called the Mind's Eye Tribe. If you guys want to look it up, it's mindseyetribe.com. But I tell the students there, uh, first, there's a lot of young people that come to us and I will say, you guys don't know this, but there was a time when we had a magical place called Blockbuster. <laughs> and it was great. you would go on a Friday night and you would have to choose what you're going to watch over the weekend. And you would base it, so there was no internet, you would base it solely on the cool pictures on the box. <laughs> and nine out of 10 times, that movie would suck. Yeah. So, <laughs> but, since so you had it all weekend, you watched it anyway because you had to pay for it and you were gonna pay late fees. Didn't matter who you were, you were gonna pay late fees because everybody paid late fees. So we watched it, but it was a great film school. We learned what was good, and we learned what was bad. And you don't see the bad stuff so much anymore. You guys don't get to see bad movies that much unless you really dig into Netflix deep. Uh, so uh, it, was a, it was a good school, a good place to learn. And I don't think people get to do that as much anymore. So it's, it's sad, let's watch Sharknado. <laughs> <laughs> and how did you get the call? Like, how did you get the role for Legendary's Godzilla? Uh, my friend, uh, Garrett Warren, he is an incredible stunt coordinator. He stunt coordinates all this stuff for Avatar. He's amazing. Um, he called, he's like, dude, uh, need some people to be amazing creature performers. And I was already working on a bunch of stuff at the time. So I was like, I'll give you some names. Here, here, call these people, call her, call him, call him. So I forgot about it. Three weeks later, he calls me. He's like, dude, I need you to come in and uh, work with our creature performers. And I, what I thought, that meant was, oh, he wants me to come in and coach them to give them a better performance. So I was like, all right. So I tossed on my sweats and I shot over to uh, a stage. I think it was a Warner Brothers stage. And I walked in and it was completely empty except for me and two other guys. And so he comes right in out, he gets off the phone and he's like, okay, you're Moodle number one, you're Moodle number two, and you're Godzilla. And I'm like, <laughs> Do it. The inside of me is like, yeah! <laughs> and I had to jump on my phone and immediately start watching all of the uh, Aurora Nakajima performances and food because if you need, yeah, give me up. So I wanted to start where it belongs as far as I was concerned, and that's when, where it started for me. So I watched his performance, and then uh, I, I was like, okay, I don't have the I don't have the giant suit making me need to take these giant steps anymore. I don't have to do that. So I'm, I'm gonna try to make it look like this. And then Warner Brothers and Legendary, they were like, uh, okay, do some of this. And I'm like, you want this? I'm like, no, 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 give him shoulders. I'm like, this? I'm like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, well, you should be bent forward. So very slowly over time, he started going from something that was like this. <laughs> all together, we, we built what is now the legendary guy. Original, and now we have this kind of current version that technology has upgraded to. Do you think you could do what he had to do, which was such a heavy suit, the heavy movie? Do you think you can do it? Can or could I do it? Yes. Would I want to? Hell no. <laughs> you all know how much that suit weighs, right? <laughs> like at least 200 pounds, 230 pounds. And because of the war, they couldn't get foam. They had to use tire rubber. So I wore a type of suit like that once uh, for not very long. 
And when I took it off, I had heat welts on my back. I had blisters from the heat, you couldn't escape the suit burning up. I wore it for maybe four hours. Nakajima-san, I, I don't know if you know the Japanese shooting style, they shoot probably eight to 12 hours. And when you see him with the, the top off, he's probably, that's his only breath for hours probably. So you you take damage wearing that kind of suit. He was a, 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 an incredible creature of endurance and talent and energy because you're sweating so much, you lose all your electrolytes, you lose all your liquid, and you can't, you lose the passion and you can drink it in. So, respect. Because you started with so much respect. Some of these pictures are going to be out of order, but you're going to remember them, I know. So in 2019, it was the 65th anniversary over on Godzilla Day on November 3rd in Tokyo. And TK and I and Sam, my best friend, who also basically is the world's best executive assistant, we went there just to just pay homage and pay thank you no, I don't think I to 65 years of Godzilla and everything. And when we were there, I, you know, you, uh, you're, you're going to stand out uh, in just a crowd of uh, people in Japan. And so immediately we showed up, we tried to be sneaky. We were like in the back, in the middle of like the via where they're having everything. And TJ is just looming in. And someone from Taiwan on the other side of the crowd saw, recognized you, and started running and coming over. <laughs> and the next thing you know, we had just a line of people just trying to take pictures and autographs with you. And the Japanese fans and foreign fans are so amazing that no one knew that you were coming. We were coming there just to say thank you and pay our respects to 65 years. And the next thing I know, there were people in the line with printouts of TJ's face <laughs> that they wanted you to sign because they must have went to their local just me, just me. film CBS place and like printed it out from their yeah. phone and got you to sign it. And then the next thing you know, we met all of these incredible people that you're actually going to see in some of these photos. This one is you in front of very like Shinji Nishikawa like artwork. Yeah, and he does live drawings all the time, not only here, but also at Comic-Con. This is him meeting Sonoe Nakajima, the daughter of Haruma Nakajima. And And it was incredible, the pictures that were taken by Maki Takarada's brother. Thank you. And also just plenty of other photographers that were around. We had the amazing people days. help us. Yeah. And that is them meeting at Godzilla Day, at Havia, shortly before he was discovered uh, by all kinds of fans. And then to the right, she's teaching you to write Godzilla in Japanese. So for those of you who come and get anything signed, when you see me doing that, it yeah. is that moment she taught me how to do that in kanji. I, I was learning to write that till the Japanese. Wow. Can we so 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 I, I would do one, I'm like, yes. then I'd hold it up and she'd go, mm. I saw that part. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's a very polite way of saying, Try it again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm better, a little better now. You're doing great. She, uh, she actually came out and personally met him over at Godzilla Day to just say hello. And really, she was so accommodating. But actually, you were the one who was like, I'm meeting the daughter of Nakajima san. This is amazing. She was just incredibly warm and inviting and hospital. She's just great. I know you have a lot of memories and comments about, she spent all day with us, when I was expecting one hour at the event. How many of you uh, was fortunate enough to meet Haruo Nakajima-san? Oh, you guys are so lucky. I never got to meet him, so I was so happy to meet uh, Sanoe and 
on top of that, she was, she's been generous, so generous. We wanted to give people a chance that want to do this kind of thing seriously. Uh, we wanted to give them a chance to do, to do it, but not have to pay the, the, the price, the price tag for doing it, because not everybody can afford it. So we wanted to open a, uh, a scholarship to allow people to have an opportunity to do it. And the, the only thing that I wanted to call the scholarship to honor Harula Nakajima-san was the Harula Nakajima Scholarship. So uh, she just uh, got a hold of Sanoe and they, through a whole long process, we were able to get the thumbs up and the green light to have the Harula Nakajima Scholarship at the end of my get her yeah, blessing it's, it's lot, because yeah. the name has such prestige and it is so well loved she can easily say no you know it's her father's name and she gave us and gave you and your school the blessing to carry on her father's name to teach a new generation of all of these you know action actors in order to do it and what is quickly how do people apply how many do you choose what do you need to with your requirements and also you look at every single submission oh yeah absolutely and it takes us uh it takes us a while um if you guys are if anybody in here is interested just go to mindsidetrap.com and you'll see the scholarship click on that and it'll tell you everything you need to know to come to la and start to train seriously as an action actor and maybe someday as a super actor we will have questions at the end, so yeah, do not awful. forget them. <laughs> and this was us at Toho Studios. Inside, it is Maki and Tetsuya Takarada. TJ, of course, is there, Akira Takarada. We've got Magui, who was our amazing translator. Me and my best friend, executive assistant, Sam. What is it like meeting him? Yeah. He's like a force of nature. He is both kind and super intensive. Do you, who here knows Dr. Arasan or his work? You know that he's he's famous for a reason. He is a great human, and he just has so much positive energy. He's just a wonderful person. You can tell that I am completely unimpressed by <laughs> I could not contain myself. Uh, it was an amazing, amazing day. Because this is inside Toho Studios, and it's you in front of Rugatsu. I mean, it's awesome. And this is literally two minutes after I touched the oxygen destroyer. The literal oh. original. Oh. Oh. So you can look at the video about 30 feet to the right. If you can't see it in this picture. I have some on my phone, but, but yeah, it was pretty awesome. <laughs> so Toho Studios is quite private, and we're not allowed to take photos inside. Obviously, these were special permission. So I probably don't have that photo. <laughs> <laughs> Same with me. <laughs> they wouldn't let me take your photos. streamed in one of the stages because they gave you permission to do it and we got to see the river where they shot Seven Samurai. What is it like being one of the very few people and one of the very few foreigners that get to go inside Toho Studios to take a look around with special thanks to the Takarada? It's incredible. It's an honor. I mean, that's all you can really say. To be part of the Toho history and just and then get to see that actual history. They have the stuff, the, the swords, the, the landscapes where Sam Sam Samurai was filmed. That's amazing. The Ashton Destroyer, some of the original suits, some of the original heads and models, all of that stuff is spectacular. If you love this stuff, this is the greatest honor and I am well on it. We even got to see um, Takarada-san do surprise a bunch of fans that won the lottery to do like the tea, the Godzilla tea ceremony, and he kept trying to surprise them, and then you were in the background of that entire time. It was like he said, just he was an absolute delight. So we're gonna try. 
we have one more photo, which is you just outside. I mean, oh. this is a legal photo. Legal. <laughs> and they gave us a private guided tour and there was a gentleman who was a cinematographer on Shin Godzilla and he kept hugging you and yelling, I love TJ. <laughs> and it was absolutely great. When did it hit you that you were going to be part of such a legendary franchise? Because you got to be you know, Sonoe, you were in the new version from Legendary, you got to meet Akira Tamarada-san, like, your name is now weighted with all of these other legends in the Godzilla franchise. Like, when did it hit you that you are cemented? You are the truth. Yeah. 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 Tell us. Yesterday. <laughs> 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 Yesterday, as I got to meet a lot of people that we were signing with and talking to, and they they didn't know each other. They came up, and each one said, and it didn't dawn on me. It was super cool being there and talking to all those people. But you don't you don't think I'm now in the same thing as you, so, so you don't think that. You're just like, uh. but yesterday. A lot of people came up to me and each one said, you're the reason I love Godzilla. And I'm like, oh, Godzilla's been around for 65 years. But he's like, no, no, you're my Godzilla. And I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> I'm not even joking. That's a lot of pressure, man, but that's awesome. That is, I didn't really think about that. I, 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 that, that's why it means so much to me to see the hands raised if you got to meet Haru and Akutima because he was my Godzilla. But uh, there's new generations and they know what they know. And the first contact might be Godzilla 2014. So that's awesome. But you're also fighting like King Ghidorah. You are fighting all the Mutos. Do you have any memorable moments and scenes as you were shooting? Tons. Um, but I use music sometimes to get into a scene, especially if there's no dialogue. So I, and I often wear earbuds to do it. I remember that I was facing off against uh, King Ghidorah, the three actors that uh, play King Ghidorah, and we're all wearing pajamas. I don't know if you've seen motion capture, it's not sexy. There's nothing about us wearing these little suits with little balls everywhere. It's just not. So uh, I'm standing there, and Michael Doherty, the director of Godzilla King of the Monsters, is sitting there watching everything, We're surrounded by crew on every side. I believe Michael Doherty's dog was right over here. And uh, I'm facing King Ghidorah, and this is the first time we're facing off. And it was supposed to be a big face off, I think it was on the Arctic ice. And I'm looking at all three of them, and they're all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I gotta, I gotta get in my sp this. I gotta get it. So I like, give me a second, and I put my ear things in. See if I can find the song that I kind of. That hold on, like, look in my. <laughs> now you're Godzilla's playlist. <laughs> I think I had something to play like this. And they said action, so all I have to do is touch my thing and it'll start to play. But only I can hear it. So nobody knew what I was listening to, so. There, they said, okay, full mocap, 
And, and then I touched the thing, and then I put my hand down, and I sat there, and I was ready. I know it's only the... If you have that blasted in your head, now, the other thing I remember is, I had the volume too loud, so I was like, <laughs> and it was my ear comes. But I'll, my mind was like, man, look at his face. He's a piss. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> it was it was an awesome. That that's one of the things that I remember making it more fun. It was really, really great. And then this part of the song comes. It's not quite right for fighting. So I'm like, that's the, we gotta finish this fight. But that, all it was was a face off. So yeah, it was really cool. <laughs> you picked up that song so quickly because in Japan for Godzilla Day on the 16th anniversary, you were suddenly called on stage in front of all of these Japanese fans and Megumi, our wonderful translator, she's like, I gotta go up too. And next thing you know, you were trending on Japan Twitter. And like Japan Yahoo, and they already had that music ready to go. And it was like, wow, they are so quick and so welcoming. And it was the exact same song that you listen to when you are getting into character. So we are going to apologies if there's no sound, but uh, maybe, yeah, let's let's do that. <laughs> 